in Tijdsif. Good evening and a warm welcome to the Faculty of Agri-Sciences live Q&A session here all the way from the Marty Camp Campus Stellenbosch. I would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you, um, our prospective students, and hopefully also some of your parents are joining us for this conversation tonight. This is all about you. We would like to answer your questions. We have received quite a lot of questions uh, via email after our Martis 101 session last night. Uh, we will try to get to all of them. If you do have a question tonight, you're more than welcome. You just SMS or WhatsApp it to us on 083 792 one two zero seven um oh eight three seven nine two one two zero seven there you have it on the screen for you to phone us or to send that message with me tonight in the studio we have two um people first of all i would like to welcome rhoda malchas she is a lecturer within the faculty of agri sciences department of conservation ecology and, and Conservation Ecology and Entomology, yes. and Cecile Bester, who is a master's degree student in genetics. Good evening, colleagues. Good evening. <laughs> so um, I think let's kick off the conversation before we start answering all the questions. Cecile, um, I, I remember you told me the story that when you were in matric, everybody said that you must go and study medicine because you're clever, you've got good marks. What led you to go and study agri-sciences? Um, yes, Monica, when I was in matric, everyone told me you should become a doctor. And deep in my heart, I knew that I wasn't cut out to be a doctor. It wasn't for me. Um, and luckily, my parents really supported me when I told this to them. And they said, um, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to become a scientist. But I absolutely love agriculture. I want to be uh, more involved in agriculture. And they took me to go job shadow a few people and I decided, yes, this is what I want to do. And I'm so thankful and so grateful. I absolutely love what I'm doing. Um, I love being involved in agriculture. I love being a scientist and discovering new things. And I'm really grateful for that support. Um, I think it's really a sector that sometimes we don't consider, um, but it's very, very important in the greater scheme of everything. Cecile, can I perhaps just as a follow-up question, because we, I remember we received one of these questions on email from Sam Kulisiwe from Kuruman, where she said that everybody thinks that if you go and study agriculture, you're going to go into farming, um, or you have to either own a piece of land, or, you, or you're going to wear... But you said that you wanted to go into agriculture because you want to become a scientist. So what is your take on that? Farmer, farming background? Um, Yes, I think um, agriculture is so versatile and there's so many different sectors and you don't have to become a farmer or own a piece of land. Um, so my part of science is I'm more involved in the background of it. I'm studying plant breeding, which means that we are developing new cultivars and we are improving the seed and the quality of the seed that farmers plant. And there's a lot of other, other different sectors that also look more at behind the scenes of agriculture. And this includes as well um, being a consultant and consulting farmers into improving their overall farming. And you can still study agriculture if you want to become a farmer. It is still a very good option and still agriculture. But I think we often don't realize all the opportunities in science that there is um, behind the scenes working to improve agriculture and to improve the overall yields of our fruit um, crops and our cereal crops and everything that comes with it. Um, Rhoda, I promise I'm going to get to you, but I, we received here in a, 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 a WhatsApp asking that the caller says that, um, good evening, um, is it as difficult as they all say it is? Now, I'm not so sure whether they, the caller is referring to just general university life or agriculture, but is, universities, is university studies difficult? <laughs> How difficult? <laughs> um, it is difficult and that is a good thing um, and I'll, I will explain why and um, this is advice that I got from my dad which I remembered throughout my university career and he said in university you're going to learn how to perform under pressure and that's going to help you one day when you are um, in the job sector have a job and you need to um, do certain tasks in a short amount of time or you need to make certain decisions um, under pressure. So university teaches you a lot of skills as well and um, it's difficult, but it's doable, and you won't be the first person doing it. Numerous people have received their degrees, thousands of people. 
Um, and there's a lot of support. The university has such good support services. So make use of that. There's Demis, go speak to your lecturers. We have um, the Center for Student Counseling and Development that can help you. Um, it's really, it is difficult and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think embrace the pressure. You will be able to do it. Go to class, do your work on time. Um, also manage your time and start studying beforehand. Don't leave everything for the night before. Yes, it's important to have the university experience and to also have a balanced life, but your studies will always come first. Um, I'm going to leave this question for now. Rhoda, you as a staff member, um, you most probably also see a lot of the challenges that students have. Uh, from your experience, um, what is your take on it? How can students prepare themselves? Can students prepare themselves? Yes, and so I do think that I've seen many students come into the university over the years. And uh, for me, myself, I'm the first one in my family to go to university, so it was uh, kind of sink and swim for me. But um, what I would advise is for you to familiarize yourself with your um, program, for instance. Uh, lectures usually give you um, a, a class schedule for the semester ahead of time. It's good to know where your classes are, especially if you're new to the university and it's in your first year. Then uh, you know, familiarize yourself with the campus. Those students who already live in Stellenbosch or in Cape Town or close by, come and visit the campus. You know, there are lots of spots to hang out and just you know, have coffee or something. But come and and check it out. Check out the space. Uh, maybe ahead of time, come and see where the classes are. And uh, I really also find that students help one another often. Um, students often find uh, you know uh, peers who help, and so that's really helpful. And uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, it, it helps to do as much as you can before you arrive on campus, uh, but also just to kind of take it easy and you do get into it. I think the first year is probably the time for adjustment uh, and you do a lot of that, but things do get easier as you learn the ropes. Uh, you get to know where spaces are, you also get to know where the help is, like Cecile was saying earlier, and and you, you, you get comfortable in your own skin on campus. So, yeah, it's possible and it's great fun. <laughs> I think, if I may, I can add to that as well. And I think the biggest mistake that students do is that they don't ask for help. Very often because they either don't know where to ask for help, um, sometimes they do ask for help and then they might not get the right answer or somebody that is really welcoming and warming. Um, so keep on asking for help. We've got a fantastic um, AgriScience Students Association. Um, Cecile was the, uh, was the outgoing ASA a chairperson. And you can email them, asa at sun.ac.z and say, I'm coming to campus, can I perhaps see, can you show me around? Um, so please do reach out to us, um, we are there for you. Just for everybody that might be joining late, I just want to, re um, to repeat, there is a WhatsApp telephone number that you can send in any questions to us. It is now on the screen on 83 Okay. Um, I want to get back to, Rhoda, you, you said that students should familiarise themselves with their programme. Now, you are a lecturer within conservation ecology and entomology, and at undergraduate level, we don't always get that many students that um, study it. Can yes. you perhaps just, what is conservation ecology all about? So, in our department, we have quite a diverse uh, um, discipline. There are people who work with plants, and so I would be one of those people, but then there are people who work with animals, people who work with insects, uh, different kinds of animals. We even have a parasitologist. We have nematologists in our department as well. And so uh, Stellenbosch University is very well known for its expertise uh, in some of these fields, and uh, so uh, yeah, our discipline is quite diverse. In my case, I also deal with that interface between people and nature. So I'm a social ecologist, and, um, and so my discipline is a little bit on the edges of uh, both ecology and um, uh, I suppose something similar to social anthropology, human ecology. And so really so many uh, avenues that you can explore, climate change, uh, water sanitation, water and sanitation, uh, biodiversity conservation, you could look at a specific species right from the cellular level all the way up to different levels of biological diversity uh, um, organization. So we do many things in our department and we would welcome it if you guys uh, thought that it's something that you might be interested in. Interestingly for us, we're in conservation ecology, but in agri-sciences. 
And so one of the reasons for that is that our discipline is especially focused on what we call disturbed landscapes, so landscapes that have already been used uh, by humans for farming, but even housing settlement and other things like that. And so the idea is to see how we can restore nature in certain areas or otherwise how we, we can mitigate damage to nature and uh, in other spaces how we can conserve what is left uh, of natural spaces in our landscapes. And so we welcome you to conservation ecology if you're a nature lover, if you're that person who loves hiking, if you're that person always scratching around in a, in a tidal pool, uh, we welcome you. We, we've got uh, aquatic sciences here, we've got um, all kinds of interesting uh, avenues that you could pursue. And uh, yeah, we, we are looking forward to those of you who'd like to join us. Um, Rhoda, we just received here a WhatsApp from somebody that says, what is the difference between a BSc in conservation ecology and a BSc in biodiversity and ecology? Yeah, so the biodiversity and ecology program is offered in the science faculty and conservation ecology is in the, con is the, in the agri science faculty. But I think from a subject level point of view, uh, if you're interested in evolutionary biology, for instance, uh, and, and um, you know, biophysiology, um, like f physiological uh, uh, content, then the BDE program is more likely to satisfy you. In our department in conservation ecology, our teaching program is, uh, I find, is, um, is wider in terms of disciplinary interest and uh, spans, for instance, you know, social ecological systems, uh, and uh, restoration ecology. And so I would say that in our case, some of the sciences are more applied than in BDE. And we have students who um, <coughs> sometimes come over into our department from uh, the BDE program, and so they are compatible. Uh, <coughs> but, uh, but you know, conservation ecology, I would say, offers a, a wider perspective and applied sciences uh, in, in biodiversity studies. Um, Rhoda, it links up to a, a question that we received with a, with a student asked. I would like to ask on the variety of the degree and also the future opportunities of the degree based on how the world is evolving with things such as global warming. Absolutely. So I think that's a wonderful question and it's so topical. Um, we've got a climate science, a, sc a, climate, a school of climate science here at Stadenbosch that was recently uh, de uh, launched. Uh, so very topical question. Um, I think our, if I think of where students that I've taught over the years have ended up, I was just studying my students today, in fact, that uh, you can end up in fields as diverse as policy formulation, you know, responses to climate change, adaptation and mitigation policy, internationally, for instance. You could end up working in the NGO sector. And in fact, I know students who started their own NGOs because they became um, activists uh, in their particular field. You could end up working as a researcher uh, at the university or any other research institution. Uh, you could be the scientist who's collecting the baseline data that informs policy and human uh, action. And so, again, a very diverse field. You could end up working in environmental education, for instance, either in a school or otherwise in, a corporate, in the corporate sector. Uh, you could end up in agroecology, so working with farmers uh, and informing biodiversity, uh, conservation and planning in that context. So again, very many uh, diverse fields. Um, you could become an auditor, for instance, uh, for certification schemes that try to, infor, uh, to ensure organic production. Uh, you could even end up in government uh, becoming um, an advocate or a minister of environmental or, or affairs or uh, agriculture or work in those uh, government portfolios. So very many opportunities and um, yeah, in. I find that our degree is so diverse that students have ended up in many sectors. I think that's the wonderful thing about studying <clears> within <throat> the applied sciences. It's not only one job that you're going to do in the end. It is really, I always want to say, I never know if it's the right English word, but it's like a springboard or a trampoline. You just, yes. you, you jump on it with your interest and with your strengths, and then you jump into the direction where you really want to go and do. And as you've heard, it is diverse. It, 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 I wish I was 17 years old again. <laughs> so see, let's give uh, genetics also a little bit of air time. <laughs> Just to be fair around the table. Um, thank you, yes. Um, I think I'll, I'll speak about genetics, but I'll also speak about the um, plant and soil science in general, which was my undergraduate degree um, that I did. 
and I think it's a, a lovely degree. Um, I think you're so diverse, agri-science, you can go into animals, you can go into conservation um, and ecology, you can go more into the forestry, um, you can do plants and soil sciences, which gives you the option of doing um, agronomy, um, soil science, horticulture, um, genetics, plant pathology, which is really, really lovely. Um, I love my degree because um, it's really, I think, so um, also part of things like climate change, for instance, where we really need to produce better crops that can survive in more harsher conditions um, with less rainfall, with more salinity um, in more extreme temperature conditions. So we are lo really looking at what genes and what traits can we incorporate into our major cereal crops. Um, so I work on wheat um, at the moment, but you can really go into working on maize, um, working on fruit, working on really any crop that is your passion. Um, and I think so many opportunities, um, even opportunities working on sugarcane or um, working on grapevine and becoming a grapevine breeder um, or we have South Africa has tea breeders as well working on honeybush tea and rooibos tea so I think there's so many different options and sectors and um, yeah a really really nice program I really enjoyed my undergraduate. Yeah. Cecile can I just ask the structure of the program um, you know is that um, when you do when you did a BSc at Greek and plant and soil sciences how was how was the first year did you have these weird subjects that you just spoke about or how did it start off um, it started off more being in the um, we had more BSc subjects that we did um, with the science faculty so normal chemistry and physics and um, biology and maths and that really just um, gives you a foundation and um, lays a groundwork at university. And then we did have one applied um, module for our specific field in our first year already. And then that gets more and more um, as you progress in your years. Um, and really we had a lot of diverse subjects um, that was in different departments. So um, I had one sub subject, for example, in agronomy where we just looked at how do we control weeds, um, so any plant that we don't want in our field. And that looked a lot, a lot at different chemical um, controls or um, cultural methods or things like that. And then I had a molog um, entomology and nematology in the conservational um, and ecology, uh, yeah, sorry, conservation <laughs> and ecology department, um, where we learned more about parasites and other things that attack our crops. So um, I think the wonderful thing about the structure is you get experience in a lot of the different departments um, with a lot of the different things that is very important in agriculture um, at the end. So you have a very good idea of everything that's important for a farmer, the soil, the water, um, the crop choice itself, the planting time, the planting date, um, the seed quality, all the pathogens affecting it, and you really understand agriculture and um, as a whole better, I think, taking this um, degree and in the program. Cecile, so all I hear is opportunities. That, that, that is really what, it, what I hear. And I think as students that's listening in should also know that uh, I always explain that it's like a triangular. You start with the basis of chemistry and physics and maths and biology, and you sit in exactly the same classes as the students that do a BSc within the Faculty of Natural Sciences. If you do wood and wood product sciences, which is part of the forestry department, um, you sit with engineering students along with them in the class. So that's the basis. The science is the basis. And as you progress in your second, third and fourth year, it becomes more specialized. And, and, and then you really start to know the ins and the outs on, 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 that, on, those specific, on your major subjects that, that you do. Um, I, I heard here a buzz. I just want to quickly check here. Um, I think this is one for you, Rhoda. Does this degree involve practical work that will prepare students for uh, the work right out of the gate? And is the industry saturated? So um, with conservation ecology, because the degree uh, program offers such diverse uh, exposure to different uh, avenues within the discipline, um, I do think that saturation is possibly not a problem for our discipline. Um, do you come out ready to work? 
Uh, I would say yes. So, so let me explain that when you when you enter the degree program, you have lectures and you also have practical sessions. And practical sessions uh, in your timetable are for about three hours uh, every week. One session like that of three hours, and usually then you do practical work. Uh, in my case, for instance, I took my students to the Jan Marie Park up, the, up Victoria Street this afternoon, uh, this morning, and our practical was about resilience today, and we talked about resilience in social ecological systems. Uh, and so, you know, the idea there for me is to prepare my students to be able to think and also uh, critique ideas of resilience um, that they should be able to do in, in any other context. Just last week, for instance, I took them to Parliament. Uh, in the Western Cape legislature so that they could see where the science that we generate at the university can end up in policy decisions. Uh, so the idea is to expose them and to also teach them practical skills, yes. Um, the curriculum is focused on theory as well so that you can make a contribution to theory and, and thought in, you know, in abstract ways. Uh, but yes, you do get exposure to practical things and a lot of other practical t uh, training happens in the in the workplace, so as I've, I have students, for instance, who um, develop GIS skills because they enjoy spatial data and spatial data analysis and modeling, and then they pursue that on their own. Uh, so there's lots of opportunity to do that as well. So yes, you get a practical exposure in the university, and then also a lot of opportunity for on-the-job training uh, once you enter the job market. But Rhoda, if there's any student at the moment that is listening and think, oh wow. <laughs> I made the wrong choice. I, I think I should study conservation ecology. Do you perhaps know, I'd, unfortunately our faculty administrator had a medical emergency tonight and couldn't attend, but uh, do you know whether they can change? So yes, I mean, I, I have students in us, so we only see the students from second year onwards. Uh, so second, third and fourth year. This is a four year degree program, by the way. By the t it's called a professional degree. And by the time you leave our degree program in conservation ecology, you come out with an honors level qualification. So you don't have to do uh, the three years and then an extra honors after. You do four years in this professional degree. And the idea is indeed that you come out at that level with some practical training included in the curriculum. Um, so yes, you, you are welcome to uh, cross over if you'd like. And we, we welcome students from, you know, because this, the, the, the nature of our discipline is so multidisciplinary, it is actually, you know, if, if you're coming in from another um, science course into conservation ecology, uh, there are certain criteria, but yes, our program is open to you who might be wanting to change your mind. Um, I wanted Rhoda to answer it so that you can really hear the genuineness in it. But yes, if you want to, if you're watching or if you're perhaps from a, a different faculty and you've accepted their offer and you still want to be considered, um, we do look at students that want to change over to the Faculty of Agri-Sciences. Um, we do have some very popular programs in it, uh, for which it would be difficult to cross over to at this stage. We will first have to see how many students actually arrive on campus next year. But if you at any stage want to um, change to a program, please just send our faculty administrator, Mr. Eric Van Sel, an email. And his email address is Eric, that is E R I K and then at sun.ac.za or you can work via the client services center um, that you can send an email to info at sun.ac.za. Um, I think I, perhaps on this note I just want to add as well that if you received an offer and you had some other IT glitch or you forgot or you, wasn't un you were unsure and you haven't accepted your offer, please just send an email to Eric van Sel. We, will, we do reissue um, and we're different to other faculties, so we do reissue offers to students. And if you want to change over, not always possible to all programs, but welcome to at least ask us and we will consider um, you for that. Um, Cecile, on that note, when you started studying, did, did you know exactly what your majors are going to be or did you just start with plant and soil? Were you very convinced of what you wanted to do? Um, no, I wasn't convinced. Um, I just started out with plant and soil sciences and um, my majors that I was registered for was agronomy and plant pathology. And in my second year, I had genetics 214 and I absolutely fell in love with genetics. So at the beginning of my third year, I made the choice to switch my um, one major agronomy over to genetics. And I was able to do that at a beginning of the third year level. So 
in my first two years, I was able to really see what all the different programs was about and decide which ones were for me. And then I majored in genetics and plant pathology, um, which was wonderful. So you really have the opportunity to get a bit of an idea of what is going on. And then um, you can define, or depending on your subject choices, pick your majors, maybe at a later stage even. Cecile, what was, what was your biggest challenge on, or what is your, because you're still a current student, what is your biggest challenge um, on campus? I think it, it differs at this stage for my postgraduate studies um, to my undergraduate studies. Um, and I think sometimes my biggest challenge was just keeping a well-balanced life. Um, I really sometimes struggle to, and this might be weird, but to be social in my undergraduate degree. And I had to remind myself that it's okay to not study all the time. Um, yeah, so I think that was my biggest challenge. And I really, I always say it's very important to know the thing in your life that you will neglect when times get tough. And during my undergraduate, that was my social life. And I asked one of my very close friends who had more of a social life, I said to her, will you please keep me accountable to not study all the time? And that might not be something what that the parents want to hear who's listening. But I think being well-rounded and having a balanced life just balanced everything out and helps you to perform better. And that includes um, doing exercises as well and eating healthy and getting enough sleep. I think that's very important. And it's often things that we as students overlook and neglect. I have to admit it's something that staff also <laughs> overlooked and neglect. I will have to get an accountability body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I couldn't agree more with what Cecile said. I think, you know, going into university is going to be the best time of your life. Um, and you should not only study, because if you only study, then you might as well just go to a correspondence university and do it there. Um, you have to experience the campus. Um, it's good to make friends. It is it is good to take part in other things, to develop yourself, to um, to, to stretch your, um, your, yourself, to, to do unfamiliar things as well, you know. And, and you do have this opportunity here because we've got like, I think, how many, 65 different societies on campus. Um, there's, I don't know how many sporting societies. So you can go in the more traditional um, netball, rugby, tennis, but you can do fencing and you can do, what are the weird things that they do? Latin ballroom dancing, yeah, the photography, yes. debating. Um, so there's really wonderful things that you can do as a student. Um, yeah, and, and, and you can just enjoy that, yeah. Um, Rhoda, what is the difference between lecture, lectures, tutorials, practicals, um, and all the other things that you okay. still get? Yeah, so lectures are usually when, um, you know, there's a, a bit probably like school, you know, there's a teacher in the front. Um, my lectures, by the way, are qu a little bit different. I like to do exciting things in my class, but you're going to have to come and join our teaching program to figure that out. Uh, then tutorials are opportunities for you to kind of practice what you've learned in class. Um, and uh, you usually have a, a demi, what we call a demo, a demonstrator. And so some, uh, that's usually an older student, a postgraduate student usually who's been through the course and who helps the lecturer to explain certain concepts and you do um, exercises in class to make sure that you, that you understand the work. And uh, then practicals are opportunities for you to really try your hand at something. So for instance, in a, in a chemistry lab, you would do um, titrations and you, know, you would do certain kinds of experiments. Uh, it could be a field trip in our case in conservation ecology where you go to visit a, a, a sanctuary maybe or a, a, rest, a restoration site or place where animals are, 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 um, are kept and so on. So uh, the practicals depending on the subject is uh, usually a three hour slot once a week um, but different, different subjects in different, um, in different departments have different schedules and so the slots and things would change. But those, that's basically the difference between a lecture, a tutorial, and a practical. Thank you. We've got another very good um, question. I'm not 100% sure who should answer it. I think you can both weigh in it. There are a lot of misconceptions levied against the university. Yes. What is it truly like to be part of the community of Stellenbosch? Thank you for that question. Yes. I think, Rhoda, do you want to take first? Sure. So I didn't grow up in Stellenbosch. I grew up on the Cape Flats. 
And so finding my social space here on campus was quite different for me. But I must say, I found some of the most remarkable uh, relationships um, amongst peers and, and colleagues, and even with some students on campus. Uh, it's, it's such that there are students who went through my class maybe five, 10 years ago, uh, but who still stay in touch. In fact, I had one of my students from the Northern Cape just came to visit the other day uh, to say that she's in government now and she's doing well and so on. So I do, f my advice usually to students, uh, but also to, to colleagues who are not from Stadenbosch, who come from another university, maybe even from another province or another country for that matter, I always say, find your tribe and stick with your tribe. There are lots of people here in Stadenbosch, lots of diversity on campus. And I really, I, I think, um, you know, if it would be hard to not find someone that you can connect with. I also encourage my students in my class, sometimes at the end of a lecture, I tell them, guys, you know, just ask how somebody's doing, reach out to someone. You will find people. So, so um, I, I found community on, on Stellenbosch campus and I really enjoy being a member of staff here. That's not to say that there are not challenges, but I can assure you that there are wonderful relationships to be made on our campus com in our campus community. Cecile, would you like to add something to that? I think Rada said it very well. Um, if I, if I should add something, I, I came from the free state, so it was also, I think, something completely new for me to be here in Stellenbosch. Um, and I really think there is a very nice community and there's so many different people that you will find your people. And sometimes it does take a while, um, but I think it's wonderful. I've formed some of the best relationships, people that I know will be in my life forever here. Um, and I really hope that any future students have the same experience um, that I did. Yeah. Yeah, I think if, if I can add to that also, is that uh, coming to Stellenbosch is, is definitely not always easy. It's, it's a very big uh, pond. Uh, we've got almost 30,000 students here. Um, and it is difficult to find your field. It is is very difficult. It, it's sometimes overwhelming. It looks as if everybody knows exactly where they are going. They know where the classes are. They they almost look on top of the world, and and deep down they might not feel that way. So so it's it is definitely difficult. But you should allow yourself some time. And then I do have to say that for first year students, there's there's a lot of extra support that that not only the faculty but also the students give in the residences as well as in private uh, students um, hubs that, that they give. So first year students get assigned a mentor. Now that mentor is not an academic buddy for you. You don't know really how well he passed his chemistry or his physics, but, but it's somebody that is going to look out for you to make sure that you adjust well, that you, that you know how the university works, to assist you if you've got a, trouble, a problem with registration, for instance, in the beginning. And I think it's good to, to keep tabs with your buddy, that, that he can really, or your mentor, that he, that he can really assist with you. And, and then there's also other types of um, opportunities that um, that the university offers. We, we have a welcoming program in the beginning of the year. The classes will start next year on the 13th of February, but the welcoming program starts that first week of February already. And during that week, it's compulsory for students, and I really want to urge you that you do um, attend it, because during that week, you also do activities where you uh, connect with your fellow students, where you already see faces, where you can, can, can talk to people. Um, and, and that's also already helpful um, in the beginning beginning of the year. Um, I think. <laughs> um, let me quickly check if, you, if there's more questions coming through. Um, what can I expect when majoring in crop production science? What percentage of time do you spend on practical work in your first year, or is it more academically focused in the first year? Um, Cecile, I think that's one for you. Yes, so crop production, the practicals, as was said before, you for each module that you have, you will have a practical slot of three hours, and that can be used either for practicals or for tutorials. It will depend on the module itself, and then you will also have three lecture periods normally, depending on the credits for that module. Um, these practicals in your first year will be more lab-based, and that's to teach you basic lab skills. Um, in the chemistry and biology and physics departments. And then from there on, um, you will have practicals that can be more um, going on different site visits or doing something um, 
a, a project yourself on the experimental form where you have to plant something or grow something, but you will still have lab-based practicals as, as well. And that all depends on your different majors. So for plant pathology, for example, you will um, have a lot of um, lab-based practicals. They even have a disease clinic where people will send in, farmers will send in um, samples of their plants that was infected by a plant pathogen. And in your final year, it's your job to actually diagnose um, the plant. So you work in the disease clinic in your final year. Um, I always said like a normal medical student, you need to work in your hours in the um, disease clinic, which is quite cool. Um, so it, it depends on your majors, but I think it's a very nice balance between going and seeing what's really being um, happening in industry and on farms and as well as doing something practically in a lab or even having a tutorial session where you're learning um, certain skills like coding skills, for example, or other um, data processing skills, which you will also get in certain modules. I think on that note, perhaps just um for students that might not 100% know, um, we the Stellenbosch programs obviously at the university is definitely more theory based um, because you need to know everything about everything um, to be that knowledgeable. But, but we also offer a B a Greek degree program um, in collaboration with Alsenberg Agricultural Training Institute. It's called a B a Greek. And the BA Greek programs are offered at the Elsenburg campus. They definitely have a more uh, practical focus. Um, so if you know that you prefer getting your hands dirty from the start, that sitting on your butt and studying too long for too long hours is not totally your thing, then uh, please connect with us as well so that we can make sure that you are in the right program at the right institution. Um, important to know is that the BA Greek program is offered at Elsenburg with Elsenburg um, lecturers, uh, Elsenburg facilities that have got their own residence. Um, yes, you are seen as a Stellenbosch student and you will in the end um, graduate with a qualification from both Stellenbosch University and Elsenburg, but the classes are not on the Stellenbosch mm -hmm. campus. Not to confuse anybody, we do have a B, a Greek agribusiness management program, which is agricultural economics, and that obviously is on the Stellenbosch campus. Um, I received here a question where a student is asking whether they should do all these subjects um, in English. Um, I think what is important, you um, yeah, perhaps let, let me start quickly to say that um, because your first year is mostly BSCs of subjects or in some cases engineering subjects or if you do agricultural economics it will be a lot of BCom subjects from the economic and management sciences so you would slot in with those faculties and because they're so big they have a parallel where you can do either your uh, the class in English or in Afrikaans and my advice is always that if you have done maths up until matric in Afrikaans stick to Afrikaans, you know, because if you have all those, uh, the terminology to understand that now in, in English and the workload is more and the pace is fast, then it might be more daunting that you want. Obviously you can, if you prefer to do it in a different or the other language, you would be able to do that. So my opinion always is rather stick to the language that you are comfortable in. Rauda, thank you. So in conservation yes. ecology, is this, uh, so we have a, an English teaching program and it's offered in entirely in English. Uh, we do adhere to the policy, to the language policy of the university. So if uh, we do accommodate our Afrikaans students, so for instance, when I set the test for my students in the, in the next weeks, it will be available in both English and Afrikaans. And uh, I always tell my students that you are very welcome to speak a language of your choice in my class as long as we can all understand you. So if you want to speak Nama, you are welcome, and then you must please translate for us. <laughs> That's a, that's a very, that's very good and, and very nice. I actually received now two questions. We are going into the last five minutes of this live broadcast. We're definitely not going to get to all the, the questions. It seems to me that we can be here until 10 o'clock. Um, on that note, if we don't get to your, uh, to your question, you can always email it to us. You can use the email address agric at sun.ac.za. So it's A-G-R-I-C at sun.ac.za or you can personally email me at mh at sun.ac.za but I received two um, messages one specifically that somebody asked about agricultural economics and management um, and what it entails and what opportunities does it bring and then we received somebody that wanted to have 
um, wil graag meer inlichting hee oor Wingert en Weinbouw kursus, so as Viticulture and Owen Knowledge that, that they will do. Um, we will unfortunately be able to go into the depth um, of these uh, questions, but two things that you can do. You email me, if you are close by, come and visit us. Uh, we will make appointments for you to speak to the lecturers, to meet up with some of the students. If you are far from here, we Zoom you in, we team calls you, we, um, somehow we will connect beforehand with you so that we can explain to you more about it. Um, I think a final question, um, I received here also a question that somebody asked that they're doing an um, international curriculum, uh, the Cambridge system, and how does that work with final offers and how do they send it in? So. If you are doing um, the National Senior Certificate, the NSC or an IB examination, you do not have to forward your final results once you've received it um, in the beginning of next year. Um, if you have an international qualification, if you come from overseas, Cambridge system, um, then you must please send that to info at sun.ac.za and then they will evaluate that for the final one. So basically the process, how it works from here is, you've received your, your conditional offer, we hope that you've accepted it. If you have not accepted it, please contact us. If you want to change, please contact us. Um, work hard, um, get the right grades, and um, at the end of the year, when you get your results, if there's a glitch, if something happens with your results, um, just contact us, um, then we can perhaps consider it. But please, if you get 30% for maths, mm, we have to find an alternative for you because then the university studies is not gonna be for you. So just make sure that you are an eligible candidate um, for, um, for the program that you want to study. Um, I perhaps just wanna end off and ask, any last minute advice or tip for a for a grade 12 student? Yes, so I want to remind you that agriculture and agri-sciences isn't just about primary production. In other words, it's not about putting a saak in the ground and make sure it grows. It's also about marketing, agricultural economics. It's about product development, food science. It's about the conservation of the biodiversity and the landscapes that make farming even possible in the first place, conservation ecology. So the uh, agri agriculture, uh, and agri-sciences is not just a narrow scope. Uh, come and join us and find out what else it can be. Definitely, Rhoda. It is from the farm to the fork, from the gate to the plate. There are ample opportunities um, from the input side, from the business side, from the engineering side, from the, the data science side. And we do have a data science program also where you can include genetics. There's so many opportunities. And you've mentioned scarce skills. So um, it falls within the scarce skills environment. So if you have... Um, knowledge or a skill that nobody else has you've got opportunities that nobody can have because they don't have that knowledge last thoughts from you cecile um yes i've never regretted studying agri um, agri science or agriculture here at stanamosh university um it's really become my home away from home the faculty has been a really good family for me i really love the people i've gained so much and i've learned so much and I would really recommend you to consider agri-science and to consider Stellenbosch University. You cannot go wrong. You definitely cannot go wrong. Stellenbosch University is the best um, university on the African continent for agricultural sciences studies. We are in the top, top 100 worldwide. You really want to study at Stellenbosch University. We have come to the end of our live Q&A session. I would like to thank everybody that has sent in a message. I would really love, want to extend a thank you to my colleague Rhoda and our student um, Cecile. Um, thank you for your time and thank you for advice and, and your input. And, and a final thought to the student is really, if you've got any questions, if you've got queries, please just reach out to us. We are really here be for you and because of you. So thank you very much and have a wonderful evening. Enjoy the short break that you have, even though that I know that you're all doing maths and science and, <laughs> and physics and chemistry. So good luck with that. And good luck with your final end of the year exams. We hope that we will see you all in 2023. Thank you.